All right, I said I'd do something about work platforms. So here's the thing about work platforms. Let's take a look at, here's Pug in his current condition. And he has his work platform all set up. Ooh, look at that. I took a purple Sharpie and I colored it purple. And I made an extra one. So that when I go to the contest, I can show what a work platform is. Sometimes I color it in letters. But that's just a purple Sharpie. Which is a cool thing to have. The purple Sharpie is pretty, pretty sweet. Anyways. Okay. So a work platform is. Here's a 280. He's got half of his platform. Oops. Okay. Here's a 280 motor. All right. There's a platform. There is the underframe. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a platform that sits right here. And I can goop it. And I am also putting on here, somewhere around here, I got some triangles. Because in the past, here's last year's 280. Now this thing is a beastly, a beastly 280. With this super long wheelbase, this thing has ridiculous power. But this, this time we're going to do our guy over, over there. We're going to do that guy. That guy, that one, the Mark 14 is better than the Mark 10. The Mark 10 is cool, but with this super long wheelbase, it does have a little trouble with the 15 inch radius. Even though it's got everything built in. The problem with this under frame is these brass shelves are really hard to make. And I didn't want to make any more of them. Even though I already made enough for all the 280s. I decided I wanted to do... I wanted to go the extra mile and do this one. Now last year, I scored as highest points I've ever scored. Before I got disqualified for not being finished. That's okay. That was a favor my friends did for me. The whole thing about this contest is I want to be judged in front of my peers and I want them to say yes you are a master builder of locomotives or not or maybe maybe I'm not it's four years okay maybe I'm not ready yet but if I am then then that's the only way I want to win it that's it oh no there's a triangle right there oh crap I hope we didn't lose them all those triangles are important because this platform here, which had a tendency to break off, even though I've tried many methods, I made these triangles. Here's one of them. I wonder where the other ones went. Okay, you can't even see that triangle. There he is right there. Right. Wait, where? Where? Where is he? He is right there. I'm going to bond that triangle on the bottom here to uh, hold this. So it doesn't break off so easy because it's easy to break them off. But let's talk about work platforms now. What are work platforms? So here is here's the 280 platform that I've worked on so far. This one has to be a two level because there is not a lot of clearance. So I need one that goes over the motor. That's why I got this cut out. And this is the second version of this. The first one I made is too wide this one and then I bonded it and I heat treated it so that we don't have a repeat of last year with the humidity problem okay then I centered it thanks to a, a friend of mine John sent me one two three blocks which I was able to use to center this and that is something I have not been able to do in the past thanks to his one two three blocks I was able to center this and bond it accurately Okay, and then here is our back half. Yes, it has the Colossus hold fast on it. It'll be bonded like that. Okay. All right, so anyways, what do work platforms do? Here's one of the SD90s. This is why a DCC work platform is so awesome. Look at this. Let's get down lower where you can see it better. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, here's one of the SD90s. All right, so this platform here, which is gooped on top of the Rev1 motor, and then I goop on top of that the circuit board that I make. It gives it extra strength. It gives me a place to put the decoder. In this case, it's a DH126D. Bridge rectifier for constant lighting and the capacitor to make sure those lights don't flicker. This gives me all this working space so that I don't end up with a bird's nest in here. It makes life so much easier. So now I, I laser cut them because I have a laser. But you don't have to do that. You can use any nice material that you want. Cut up just a little opening. Set it down on the motor. Put some goop on it and goop it in place. And then you've got a platform to put all your electronics on. And that makes a, makes life so much easier. It, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I started doing all these bridge rectifiers for constant lighting and then adding capacitors to them. Because I had room and I had a place to put it. That's what's cool about it. And that's why we like to make platforms. And you can color me. I think it's cool to make them look cool. Here's the 280s. I'm going to put, I'm going to label them. But, uh, yeah, painted them black. Oh, no, there's a chip right there. Oh, crap. Uh, but there, I'm going to put some big numbers on here. It says 280. Because I think presentation is going to be important. Well, no, it ain't. I mean, it's important as far as I'm concerned. I like to have a cool presentation. As far as operation goes, whether you paint them or not, doesn't really matter. But there it is. That is a platform. And you can make these out of what whatever material you want. And bring your wires up. Like I like to drill holes. And you can drill holes in them and bring your wires up nice and neat and clean. And it makes putting in a decoder super easy. And in DC, this started from me putting two copper strips on a piece of plastic on top of motors for DC. And I, it just built and kept on going from there until I started doing this, these platforms. And you can make these, no problem. And you can take, you can do just like I did. I bought a roll of copper sheet and I cut strips from it and I laminated on there with contact cement and it works just fine. That's all there is to it.